Whoa, big news in our industry today. Unless you've been living under a rock, you will see that Medtronic's Hugo Raz has finally got FDA clearance. That is big news for our industry. Why? Well, first of all, Intuitive's had a run at the market in the US for more or less 20, 25 years. But what's happened now is you've got you got lots of companies coming in. You've got CMR Surgical, you've got Distal Motion, you've got Moon Surgical, you've had Senhance in there for a long time. But this is the first time in Intuitive's history that they've got one of the big three in surgery that's now come in as a major corporation. So they've got huge amounts of muscle to put behind this. And remember, in surgery, Medtronic is really well thought of in the USA. And they've got lots of very, very favorable accounts who are friendly accounts to them, who have got a lot of deals with them, who will now be able to get access to Hugo Raz. Now, just as a quick reminder, for those that don't know, Hugo Raz is a modular system with an open console. So what do I mean by that? Just as a quick refresher for those that don't know. Intuitive basically has a closed console, which is like a cockpit that you put your head into and you sort of go immersed into it. And it's got lots of advantages for why you do a closed cockpit but it's just one of the ways that you can do it what Medtronic has is they have a console where they have an open 3d screen so that you don't go into anything you sit there look at the screen but you can also see the entire operating room as you operate so this is closed console versus open console so that's a big difference the second thing is that intuitive is what's known as a boom system so they have one big sort of tree that is next to the bed with the four arms that come off it in an X configuration for the XI or for the Da Vinci 5. This has been a, a standard for over 20 years, but now what you're seeing is different uh, architectures that are coming out. And Medtronic is the type of architecture that's known as a modular system. So they have each arm, instead of being on a big boom, each arm is on a cart, and that cart can be positioned anywhere around the bed. It's a different philosophy of surgery. But what that means is you've got some people who will do more of that will prefer the boom system, which is the intuitive boom system, which kind of dictates a bit more of where you put the trocars or the ports or the keyholes. Whereas the Medtronic system allows you a little bit more flexibility, which allows you to put the ports or the keyholes where you want. Um, not exactly where you want, but, but more where you would do it in laparoscopic surgery. Medtronic, obviously, obviously being a very big laparoscopic company, wants to have that laparoscopic paradigm. Whereas Intuitive, being a fully robotic company, has more of a robotic pa paradigm. Both robots, don't get me wrong. But what you're going to find is that there are going to be a group of surgeons, especially in general surgery or in gynecology, that prefer to have that kind of more laparoscopic feel to it. So I think you'll see them gravitate a little bit more towards maybe the modular cart systems. And also a lot of those surgeons, they're used to having an open an open view of the operating room. They, they stand at the table doing laparoscopy, but watching a big open screen. So I think some of those will also like the open console. In my mind, about 50% of the world actually likes an open console. There are several surgeons I've talked to with the Da Vinci system that say, actually, I'm quite intrigued by the open console. Why is this really important for the industry? Well, in the US, which is still the biggest market for robotics by far, about 1.9 robots per hospital in the US, and the biggest number of procedures, and the highest adoption per urology, gynecology, general surgery, and some other specialties as well. But you've got basically three Goliaths in the US market for surgery. You've got Johnson & Johnson through their Ethicon unit, which is J&J &J MedTech Surgery now. You've got Medtronic through their surgical unit. And then you've got Intuitive, which has just been over the years taking market share in surgery and dominating. Why is this important now? Let me flash you up this graph and you need to look at this graph very carefully. So this is data that I've got access to recently from hospital data, which comes from the sales data that goes into hospitals. And what you can see is that even from a year ago when I put this last graph up, Intuitive's march on endo cutters has moved forwards. Endo cutters, what are they? They are endoscopic staplers that put two rows or three rows of staples either side of a knife and cut between. They're a really good surrogate marker for how much of the complex surgery is being done. And what you can see here is that now, by a long way, Intuitive has become the dominant market player in endocutters in the US market. They have over 50% of the market, leaving Medtronic and J&J &J with smaller market shares. Why this is important is because they are very high profit markers within the surgery business. 
And if you actually look at the, I've got, I've got data as well on the value of that market. What you're seeing is that Intuitive has not only the market share leadership in terms of units, but also in terms of the money that that brings in. This is important for J&J and Medtronic because the only way that they're going to now combat this is to have a robot and then eventually on that robot get their staplers. On Intuitive, you have the Shoreform stapler. On Medtronic, you would add the Signia stapler. And then on Johnson & Johnson, you'd have the Ethicon 4000 stapler, which would go onto their Otava. Today, it's still only Intuitive that's got the stapler on there. And I don't think that this latest de novo that Medtronic has just done because it was a de novo, not a 510K, actually has the stapler on it. I think they've got over the line got the biggest hurdle down, which is getting the system over the line with urology. But they've probably not got the stapler on it or the Ligasure, and they may not have the white light ICG yet. I'll need to look at the file to be able to see what they've got. But why this is important is that this now puts massive pressure on J&J &J in this market. Medtronic are able to now come in, and they're going to be able to add a robot even with their manual staplers and defend their market. Once they get the, the Signia on the actual robot, they'll be able to defend it even more. J&J &J is still in clinical trials with their autonomy. So they're a long way away still from being on the market. So now what you've done is you've now got this fracture in the market where you've got two of the three big players have that robotic play. You have Intuitive and you have Medtronic. j and is chasing fast with Otava, but they're still not on the market yet. This clearance this week for Medtronic is really important for them as a company in the surgery business. Now, why is it going to be really interesting to see what happens? Because today Medtronic released with Urology, which is really dominated by Intuitive, but they've also got the trials going on for hernia, which I think is already completed, and gynecology. So that means that they'll be able to do what's known as fast following 510Ks. So you get over the line bleeding and get over the line, just get over that line of the de novo, and now your own system becomes your own predicate. And therefore, you can do your 510Ks using your own system as the predicate. So that means you can put rapid advances in software, in instruments, in advanced instruments, in advanced energy, in staplers. You can bring them on faster. And you can get faster and faster because they're 510Ks, expansion of indications. So you'll be able to get hernia very fast and you'll be able to get gynecology very fast. And that is really important. So it, it really allows Medtronic now to to come back and defend that market in the US against Intuitive. But it's not going to be easy. And again, don't be fooled by the fact they've only got urology at the minute. But I think they've been smart getting urology first. Why? Because urologists still rule the roost in terms of robots in many, many hospitals. There are things known as robotic user groups, and it's the urologist that has a huge voice in that. So being able to tip your cap to the urologist and say, if you want to use it for prostate, you can. That is a really important strategic move by Medtronic. So I've got to give them full credit for that. Now, what do I think is going to happen now? Well, it's 2025. It's coming towards uh, the end of the year. It's the holiday period. It's the Christmas period. It's the end of year period. So I can't see a big launch coming now. But I imagine that in 2026, they're now going to take a full run at this in 2026. And I'll be very curious to see whether they go out and try and go wide or whether they try and go focused. My advice would always be that, especially when you've got an early launch, you can try and go focused. They've got one massive advantage though now, and this will be a massive advantage over J&J. &J. They already have years of experience outside of US with over 100 systems that are out there for sure. And they've been gaining a lot of knowledge about usage, about how you convert or don't convert an intuitive account, how you go after Greenfield accounts, where their system really shines, where it struggles a little bit more. They're going to have all of that knowledge. They're also going to know how to do clinical implementation and get the robotics programs up and running. They're going to know about the price sensitivity and the price elasticity. They're going to have lots of knowledge in there because they've been out there and already done this in the OUS market and they'll have realized exactly how hard this is and you cannot underestimate that that knowledge will have changed them inside and their launch in the US for sure will be different than their initial launch outside of the US. And I've actually been very impressed lately by the, their change in marketing, their change in approach. I feel they came out a little bit too much beating the chest that we're going to democratize I think now they've got a really good picture of how it works. And I think this is going to be one of the most valuable things that they bring into this US launch. So I'm really excited to see this next year. Why am I excited? Because this is more choice out there for the market, choice for hospitals, choice for users, and ultimately choice for patients. And I'm rooting for Intuitive because they do a brilliant job and they all know that I just, I, I do find them amazing. But I'm also rooting for Medtronic, as I've said many times in my blog post, and I'm really rooting for J&J as well to come because I'd really love there to be super strong healthy competition because it also helps the smaller companies as well because if one of the 
big companies can't do it, then no one's going to believe the small companies can do it. So I think this is just super, super, super good for our entire ecosystem and for the healthcare market in general. And the US is the utter and to total proving ground of any technology. And I am just wishing Medtronic really good luck with their launch. And I am going to be watching it in 2026 with anticipation and cheering them on and cheering, cheering everybody on in this space because I really want us to succeed in this space and keep it vibrant. Don't underestimate how big this news is and watch for what happens in 2026. And I'll do a deeper reportage on this as we go through the year next year. See you then. Bye-bye.